Ah. As we're free for the moment, love it. Good old inhaler in my pocket, just in case. Susan Bowles, mother of the origami killer's latest victim. Maybe she knows something about the circumstances surrounding her son's death. Anybody home? Mrs. Bowles? Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Take her own life, huh? Wait a minute to leave your baby in the world, huh? Oh, hang on, baby. First, I gotta find Mama. Hello, little cutie. Who? Oh, you looking for your Mama? This letter. Holy fuck. I hope she... I hope she hasn't... Mrs. Bowles? Mrs. Bowles, are you there? Mrs. Bowles! Mrs. Bowles, can you hear me? Wake up! Wake up! I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I... I don't want to go to the hospital. Please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this wound with? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Don't move. I'll be right back. Hmm. Need some bandages and disinfectant. Gotta be here somewhere. Let's see. I need this, and this, and this. Quick, she's losing blood. I gotta hurry. I'm here for you, Susan. You'll be all right. I'll take care of you. Stay with me, Susan. Susan, do you hear me? Susan, stay with me. Can you hear me? Stay with me. Okay, come on. There, I done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Well, luckily, the wounds aren't too deep. Hey, how are you feeling? My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> I was a private eye when I walked in. Gotcha. Mommy will live for now. Let's see how Junior's doing.
Hi there, Emily. So, what seems to be the problem, huh? Oh, going by the smell, I got a pretty good idea. Okay. How do you do this again? No, oh, brother, that's not the right way. Okay. <clears throat> Let's... No, brother, that's not the right way. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start again. No, brother, that's not the right way. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start again. No, brother, that's not the right way. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start again. No, brother, that's not the right way. Cheat me, man. Come on, push okay. I'm doing this shit right, <clears throat> yo. Let's start again. There you go, fresh new baby. Goodness gracious. That should feel better. Right, Emily? Hmm? Hey, what's the matter? I thought we solved the problem. Doesn't look ill. Maybe she's hungry. I guess I better warm this thing up. Of course. Now I know why you're crying, my little peachy poo. Mother shall be to the rescue. Maybe she's hungry. Just tilt this ball a little bit so you don't jump. Oh, good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm going to rock you very gently so you can have a nice little snooze. Okay. All right.
Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Just not having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. I can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. The day after Jeremy. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe... Maybe he couldn't take it. Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own, I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? No. He left the house without a word and... There was just a cell phone. A cell phone? Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure... It wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's, um, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah, my mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along. But I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself. And Emily. I will. I promise. In a drawer in the living room. That's what Susan said. I should go talk to the garage guy over there. Can't stop thinking about that well. Sean seemed exhausted. Excuse me? Hey! Oh! Ha! Huh. Sorry. Didn't see you. Uh, what can I do you for? I'd like to get... my car.
Can hey, I get you the you're a pretty patient guy, you are. That car's been there for two years. We took it out for a drive every month and check the tires and batteries, just like you said. Here, it's the third floor down. The service Thanks. elevator is at the far end of the garage. Now, you have yourself a good one, Chief. Elevator at the back of the garage, third floor. Got it. Elevator at the back of the garage, third floor. Got it. Your destination is four miles from here. Leave the parking lot and take the first right. your destination. Are you ready to show your courage in order to save your son? Listen carefully. Take the highway and drive against the traffic for five miles. If you haven't reached your destination in five minutes, you will have to. If I succeed, I'll get more letters for the hangar. It's my only need. No turning back now. Stop my hands shaking. I'm not going to make it. I'm I'm not gonna make it. I don't wanna die. Not here. Not like this. I can do it. I'd do anything to save my son. A lot of good it'll do Sean if I kill myself on this highway. Go the wrong way on the highway for five miles? Am I willing to take that risk in order to save my son? I've got to do it, for Sean's sake. I have no choice.
The reception. Let's hope. The atmosphere here is one of concern. Right out. As there is still no news I've got to sleep. Sean Mars, who disappeared yesterday. A recent report indicates that the police are now treating this as a I do for you. I'd like a room. For you? Anything. <laughs> Feeling the register. Madison Page 27, single. How long will you be staying with us, Ms. Page? I don't know yet. Room 201. Last floor, stairs on the right, in the courtyard. Thanks. The pleasure was all mine. That's for sure. That obnoxious receptionist better not have a spare key to my room. The thought of it leaves me in a cold sweat. Room 201. Stairs on the right, last floor. someone there. Is he... Is he wounded? Sir? Are you alright? I'll call an ambulance. No ambulance. You're badly hurt. You need a doctor. Please, just help me to my room. It's number 207. Got the key? <sighs> He's in trouble. I can't just walk away and leave him like that. I'll help him first and ask questions later. He doesn't want to go to the hospital. Why? Look, it's none of my business. I'll... You're really in bad shape. You should see a doctor. Must have one, maybe two broken ribs. It's not fatal. But it's sore as hell. Your head is bleeding. It looks deep. I should disinfect his cuts. Para 
Paracamol Painkiller. Administer in cases of intense pain. Do not take more than one pill every 24 hours. I should disinfect his cuts. I'm gonna disinfect your wound. This might hurt a little. There. At least it won't get infected. Thanks. Paracamol painkiller. Administer in cases of intense pain. Do not take more than one pill every 24 hours. Here, take this. It should do you what some good. It? It's a painkiller. It'll help reduce the pain. It says on the box to take one every 24 hours. I don't think it's a good idea to exceed the dose. I can't afford to wait. I wouldn't move around for a few days if I were you. I, I'm gonna take a shower. All right, let me help you. I'll wait here until you come out. Let me know if you need anything. Talk to me. That way I'll know if you pass out. What's your name? Madison. Are you staying in the hotel? No, I live in town. I suffer from chronic insomnia. I seem to only be able to sleep in motels. Don't ask me why. Whenever I get too exhausted, I, uh, I come and spend a night here. I'm... I'm just passing through. And what else do you do, Madison? Apart from fixing up strangers. I'm a photographer. I take pictures of uh, furniture for fashionable design magazines. And you? I... I'm an architect. Thanks for staying. I feel a lot better now. Okay. I better get going then. By the way, you never told me your name. Ethan. Be careful, Ethan.
Why didn't you shoot? Sorry? Well, back there, Nathaniel could have had a gun. Could have killed me. Why didn't you shoot? I prefer to have all the information before I make a decision. I try to make rational choices when possible. Come on, you had a fraction of a second to react. You could have whacked me before you had time to move. You're alive, he's behind bars, everything worked out. So don't start busting my balls with your postmoderns, okay? That's him. Miroslav Korda? Yeah? Lieutenant Carter Blake, I'd like to ask you some questions. This time it looks like we got our origami killer.
All the newspapers are talking about Sean Mars, the kid who disappeared. I needed the rest. I haven't been sleeping well since the murder started up again. I've seen the parents of all the victims. And all I've come up with is this telephone and a box of origami figures. You said I could contact you if I remembered anything. Can I come in? Sure. Please, take a seat. Didn't really expect to see her again. Wonder what she wants. I just remembered something. Maybe it's not important, but a letter arrived in the mail the morning Johnny disappeared. A letter? What kind of a letter? It was addressed to Johnny's father. I don't know what was inside it, but he read it and then he left. That's the last time I saw him. And you think there's a connection between that letter and Johnny's death, is that it? Do you remember anything else about the letter? Well, I don't know why, but I kept the envelope. No sender. It was mailed in the Carnaby district. The day before Johnny disappeared. Oh, nothing particular. Except... The address. The address? It was typed with an old typewriter. Could be a lead, you never know. Well, thanks for your help, Lord. I'll let you know if it leads to anything. Wait, I... I can't just sit around and do nothing while you're out there looking for the man who killed my son. Ever since you came around, I've been thinking, and I... I want to come with you. Help you in your investigation. I'm sorry, Lauren, but that is out of the question. If you won't let me help you, I'm keeping the envelope. It's all or nothing. Listen, an investigation like this is dangerous, and I don't have time to play the bodyguard. How many clues have you got, Mr. Shelby? This envelope, 
Maybe you're only linked to the killer. I understand. It was a stupid idea. Sorry for wasting your time, Mr. Shelby. Wait. You're really something special, Lord. I'll give you that. I'm just a mother. A mother who wants to find out who killed her son. Are we partners? <sighs> We're partners. Maybe you better stay in the car. We're partners, remember? Wherever you go, I go. What are we doing here? We come to see Gordy Kramer. Kramer? The big wood tycoon from Kramer Construction. No, his son. You think maybe he's the origami killer? For now, I just have a few questions that need answers. Stupid to bring Lauren. I don't do partners too well. All that just to get my hands on that stupid envelope. You stay here till I come back, okay? Okay. Just let me know if you need me. Okay. Gotta find Gordy Kramer. Excuse me? Nobody allowed upstairs. Look, you just tell him that Scott Shelby wants to speak to me. Okay? You're starting to piss me off, man. Now beat it before I get angry. If I want to see Gordy Kramer, I'm going to have to go about it some other way. Maybe bust a few heads? Yeah, I'm tempted. But not such a good idea. Too many goon-shaped reinforcements around here. Got to find a way to get them away from the stairs long enough for me to be able to slip past. Those two goons and me seeing Gordy don't mix. I'm gonna have to think of another way to get rid of them. So, did you find Gordy? He's upstairs. He's got two goons blocking the way. You want me to handle them? <laughs> hey, what are you gonna do? Knock him out with a pair of high heels? Leave it to me! Just be ready to go as soon as they leave the stairs! Wait, Lord!
<laughs> Mr. Kramer. This is the best part. <laughs> My name is Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I'd like to ask you a few questions. <laughs> I'd like to know exactly what happened to little Joseph Brown. Beat it! You hear me? Get the hell out of here! What do you want? A witness saw little Joseph Brown get into your limousine. That was the last time anybody ever saw him. Now I know you've been arrested and interrogated till your father made a little phone call and the file was closed. Now what I want to know is what really happened. You know, just so I make sure that you had nothing to do with the origami killer. Do I make myself clear? The kid was lost. I just offered to drive him home. The police arrived, I explained the misunderstanding, and I was released. End of story. Nothing to get excited about, right? Okay, so you're a good Samaritan taking kids home who happen to get lost right next to your limousine? Now be a nice guy and tell me something I can believe. Very well. I'm the origami killer. I get my victims into my car. I drown them in rainwater. Then I dump them on a wasteland with an origami figure in one hand and an orchid on their chest. I do that because I'm bored, Mr. Shelby. And it's a creative and entertaining way of having fun. Is that good enough for you? Or do you want more? This interview is over. Get rid of this clown! It's a dangerous game you're playing, Kramer. Do you know who my father is? He only has to lift one finger and you won't wake up tomorrow morning. You're the one that should be afraid, Mr. Shelby. Not me.
It might be a trap. I had better be careful. Now where am I supposed to go? There must be a clue or something. The origami figure was in the form of a butterfly. So, am I looking for a butterfly? This is the old Pico power station. I thought it was abandoned. Electrical condensers. Going by the sound of them, they're still active. Glass. Broken glass. Sharp as a razor. Impossible to go back. I'm gonna have to crawl through it, slowly, so I don't tear up my arms. Match flame. It indicates where the fresh air comes from. All I have to do is follow the wind. My vision's getting blurry. Easy does it. I've got to move slowly. Or I'm gonna faint.
guess I don't really have any choice. It's over for me. Oh my god. Oh my god. What happened to him? Ethan. Ethan, can you hear me? 
Calm down, girl. There must be something I can do to help him. I need to disinfect your wounds. Are those burn marks on your chest? You've got a hell of a fever. I'm gonna have to get your clothes off to disinfect those wounds. burning up. He's running a fever. I'm no doctor, but I'll do what I can. Your wounds are disinfected. <laughs> that should ease the pain. That's all I can do. How do you feel? Ethan? He's unconscious. Now I'll just have to wait. And hope he wakes up. How do you feel? I've been better. Was I out for long? 
about three hours. Why the guardian angel act? You don't even know me. You didn't really leave me any choice. I couldn't just leave you like that. <sighs> you said you were here because you're an insomniac? I, um, I've been going through a bit of a tough patch the last few months. It's the kind of stuff you prefer to forget. I do what I can to live with it, but, uh, it's not easy. You, um, you got some kind of a problem? Bigger than you can possibly imagine. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be asking you questions. I mean, after all, we hardly know each other. You have no reason to trust me. Listen, I'm truly grateful for your help, but for your own sake, I think it's better if you don't ask any questions. Maybe I could help you, no I- No one can help me. You've already done a lot, Madison. Right. I'm gonna go. Take care. I didn't do it. I swear I didn't do it. I've got nothing to do with that business. I never killed nobody. Oh, no. Then why did you run away when they came to question you? I already told you I forgot to report to my parole officer. I didn't want to go back to prison. When I saw the cops, I just bolted. I wasn't thinking straight. We checked out his statement. He has an alibi for at least three of the murders. Fuck, that bastard was a perfect fit. Shit! Ash? Okay. Sean Moss's mother is here. She'd like to speak with you. It was a few months back. The middle of the night. It was pouring down. Ethan came home completely drenched at about three. I asked him where he'd been. He, uh, he spoke about drowning the rain. Um, he didn't make any sense. There was something. Something in his eyes. As if it wasn't really him. There may be no connection, but the next day there was that announcement about another victim of the origami killer. Police Lieutenant Carter Blake, and this is Agent Norman Jaden of the FBI. According to our information, Ethan Mars is one of your patients. We'd like to ask you a few questions about him. I'm sorry, that's impossible. I beg your pardon? I'm bound by an oath of secrecy. Under no circumstances may I discuss my patients. My job is to find Sean Mars alive, and I don't give a damn about any bullshit oath. 
Sean Mars's life may depend on what you know. Tell us what you know, Doctor. I'm sorry. I can't help you. And now I must ask you to leave. You need to cooperate. For your own sake. He's right. Legally, you gotta tell us what you know. Are you threatening me? I'm just giving you some free advice, Doc. I suggest you take it. Doctor, a child's life's at stake. You may know something that could help us save him. I am going to call the police and make a complaint about your behavior. Doctor, you are really pushing my buttons. The only thing I'm interested in is saving that kid's life. So, you're gonna be a good boy and tell me what I want to know or I am really gonna lose my temper. It's your duty to inform the police Let go if you suspect one of your patients, you, Doctor. You have no right! <laughs> I know you don't want to protect me. If you know anything, you must tell us, Doctor. If you don't let go of this man immediately, I'll report you and you'll be off the case. What the hell's the matter with you, Norman? What, you getting cold feet? You don't want to save Sean Mars anymore? I want to save Sean Mars just as much as you do. But that doesn't give me all rights. So you're gonna stop this shit right now. Ethan Mars has had psychological problems since his first son died. Feels responsible for his death. Sort of morbid neurosis. He is haunted by visions of drowning bodies. A few weeks ago, after one of our usual sessions, I found this on the floor. He must have fallen out of his pocket. I want you to assign every available man to finding Ethan Mars. I want a man outside his place day and night. Notify all agencies to start looking for him. I want you to keep an eye on the train stations, the airports, the bus terminals. I want every cop in the city on his ass so that if he moves, we know about it. Yes, Ethan Mars is the origami killer. I kept Lauren in the dark on this one. I'll pick her up from her place later on. The most exclusive golf club in town. Strange place for an appointment. Nice shot. Thank you. Please come in, Mr. Shelby. Would you care for a coffee? Oh, no thanks. Do you play? I tried once. But I think the owner of the course is still looking for him. It's an interesting sport. It requires strength, but also a cool head and absolute precision. Would you care to hit a few balls with me? There's no danger of damaging the greens here. Okay. Take off your jacket and grab a club. The balls are in that basket.
The most important thing is to grip the club correctly. When you feel ready, you swing. Well, it's only your first ball. You should try to strike it a little harder next time. I'm assuming you didn't invite me here just to play golf, Mr. Kramer. I hear you've been asking questions about my son. That's right. I want to know if Gordy is linked to the origami killer case in any way. My son had nothing to do with that sordid case. Well, then he has nothing to fear from my investigation. You have no business investigating my son. I told you, he had nothing to do with it. With all due respect, Mr. Kramer, it's up to me to decide who I want to investigate. I'm an influential man, Mr. Shelby, and I pay very well for loyalty. Are you trying to buy me? Let's just say I'm trying to show you where your interest lies. How much do you want to leave my son alone? I think you misunderstood me. I don't play that game. Don't go near my son, Mr. Shelby. If you do, you'll regret it. Have a nice day, Mr. Kramer. Porcelain lizards? They look new. Out of place with the rest of this old beat-up stuff.
9711 Marble Street. It's the right place, but what am I supposed to do in this dump? A GPS on the table. Are you prepared to suffer to save your son? You have five minutes to cut off the last section of one of your fingers in front of the camera. If you succeed, you will get your reward. I have to go through with it. I have no choice, for Sean's sake. I can't cut off my own finger. I, I just can't do it. I want to save Sean. I'd do anything. Anything but that. Ah! <laughs> 
monster at the desk. That's affirmative, Lieutenant. We're in position. Perfect. Nobody moves until I give this signal. Is that clear? We nail him as soon as he sets foot outside. Right, Lieutenant. Lucky that patrol spotted his car. What's he doing in there? Beats me. You're the profiler, right? I thought you were supposed to be right inside the killer's head. Well, that's just it. What I know of Ethan Mars doesn't match the killer's psychological profile. I know what the jury's gonna choose between your theories and concrete proof. What's that girl doing there? Mars comes out now, she's gonna be in trouble. What do we do, Lieutenant? Wanna get her out? No, stand down. Got to warn Ethan. The cops don't know me. I could just walk into the building without being noticed. She's going inside. Maybe she lives there. Lost just as well. We don't want anyone hanging around if Mars comes out. Ethan, what happened? The police, they're out there. I think they're here to arrest you. We've got to find another way out. What's he up to in I've there? I've got to search the hall. There's... Wait for a go on my word. No point in trying to get upstairs. Dead end on the roof. We'd be trapped. I go. Stay here, Jaden. Out of the question. I'm coming with you. Two men at the door hold your positions. It's a go.
Don't move! I'll shoot! Come on! Quick! I can't. Hands in the air! Shit. Lieutenant, there's a man and a woman exiting the alley. A woman? Shit! It's that girl who went in! Everybody downstairs! They're in the alley! Follow them! The subway. Less than an hour ago, we heard from the police who have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. Ethan Mars, father of the kidnapped victim Sean Mars, is on the run and should be considered armed and dangerous. A police manhunt is now underway, and they hope that they will soon be able to announce the apprehension of this dangerous lunatic. I brought some food. I didn't know what you like, so I brought some of everything. I, I hope that's okay. Why are you helping me, Madison? You know nothing about me. You could have been killed. I don't know. I guess it just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. You needed help. I helped you. You're all over the news reports, Ethan. Every cop in the country will be hunting you. They say you're the origami killer. Is it true? Are you the killer, Ethan? There has to be a rational explanation for this. Let me help you, Ethan.
I... I sometimes have these blackouts. Times where I don't know what I'm doing. As if I'm someone completely different. The only thing I remember afterwards is the bodies. The bodies in the water. Why are you hurt, Ethan? Why were you in that apartment? I think my other self is testing me, testing my love for Sean. He wants to know if I love my son enough to save him. That means there's some part of me that knows where Sean is. But the only way to find him is to go through these trials. Why can't you tell that to the police? And tell them what? That I'm a schizophrenic who drowns his victims and has kidnapped his own son? They'd never let me go, and I have to stay free to save Sean. I have no choice. I'm his only chance. When Sean is out of danger, I'll turn myself in, but not until then. You can't keep going like this. You're destroying yourself, Ethan. Finding Sean is the only thing that matters. There has to be another way. You don't understand. Time is running out. Sean will be dead in a few hours. I have no choice. Please, Madison, leave. Forget everything that's happened. There is nothing more you can do for me. If you want to help me, Leave. Leave me to do this on my own. Your vodka, sir. Thanks. You look preoccupied, if you don't mind my saying so. Problems with the investigation? Blake is convinced that Mars is the killer. Not you. I thought there was some evidence to that effect. 
That's true. But it just doesn't make sense. His psychological profile doesn't fit. Neither does the geolocalization. I can't see this father drowning eight victims before kidnapping his own kid. Mars is not the origami killer. I'd stake my life on it. Then who is? I haven't the faintest fucking idea. Maybe you should review the evidence in your possession. That's just what I was thinking of doing. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you know what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. I'm trying to keep a handle on it, but that's difficult. It gets more and more difficult. It'll end up killing you if you're not careful. That would be most unfortunate, sir. Well, well. Looks like there's something new. The video recording from near the park on the afternoon Sean Mars disappeared. I doubt there's anything on it, but you never know. One thousand five hundred and eighty-three vehicles identified. That's not gonna help me find the killer's car. Maybe if I cross-check it against another clue. The killer's car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. Chevrolet model corresponding to the tire prints passed at 1602 heading for the park, when in the opposite direction at 1637. That could fit the time that Sean Mars disappeared. Could it be the killer's car? Pity we can't see the driver's face. The car was stolen. Let's see, a certain Jackson Neville was suspected of stealing it, but the charges were dropped. Not enough evidence. Jackson Neville, a.k.a. Mad Jack, involved in several cases of buying and selling stolen vehicles. Considered to be very dangerous. This guy might have provided the killer with a car. It's a pretty slim lead, but it's all I have right now. One last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in the no one. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. Shit. It's... It's coming. Tryptocaine. The tube is on the bedside table. All I need is to take some, and the pain will go away. I should resist. This is gonna kill me. 
I know I can resist. I just need to stay in control and, and do something until it goes away. Manfred! Manfred! Anybody home? Hi there, Manfred. Who is it? Scott. Scott Shelby. Do you remember me? S Scott? This is Scott! Oh, yeah, of course! Well, good to see you. How long has it been? Oh, about ten years, I guess. Oh, at my age, time means nothing anymore. I, I repair clocks, but I try to forget about time. Well, how about you? Are you still with the police? Oh, no, I quit. I'm a private investigator now. Uh, this is Lauren. She's a, she's a friend. Hello. Hello, young lady. Well, this this calls for a celebration. I'm just the thing. Wait there. I, I'm sure I I saw a, a bottle of scotch around here somewhere. Nice to see Manfred again. Just like. Do an old man a favor, would you, Scott? Tell him to call back this afternoon. Sure, no problem. Hello? Yeah, this is Manfred's. He's not available right now. Could you call back later this afternoon? Thanks. Nothing much changed here. Just the dust and the clocks ticking on and on. Well... To old friends. <sighs> Do you like it? Yes, it's beautiful. It's a Stradelli. Crafted in Venice in the 18th century. Mm. It's one of my favorite pieces. Tell me, Scott. What brings you back after all these years? I'd like you to have a look at an envelope. I thought maybe you could tell me about the typewriter that was used to type the address on it. Well, let's have a look. Now, could you pass me the uh, magnifying glass from behind the counter, oh, Sure, please? I'll get it. My eyes are beginning to fail me. See what this envelope has to say for itself. Hmm. A 
the Royal Five. And yes, the shape of the T's and the F's is typical of that model. Produced between 1907 and 1924. No doubt about it, it's a Royal Five. These typewriters, are they rare? No, no, they're fairly common. I'd say many folks have one gathering dust in an attic or in their cellar. Do you keep a record of all your clients? Oh, yes, indeed. At least the ones who pay. <laughs> Any chance I could get a peek at that? Oh, yes, of course. I keep my account books in the office. Uh, if you're not in a hurry, I have a list of all the clients who ever bought a Royal Five or, or had one repaired. Yeah, that would really help us out. Hmm. Delighted to help. Give me two minutes and I'll be right back with the list. You think the killer's been here? If he has a 1920s typewriter, he may have needed Manfred's services to get it fixed. We'll know when we get the list. Killer's name might be in Manfred's paper. Hello? Manfred! Hello? Your call is locked, sir. A police car will be there in a few minutes. I need to know who you are, sir. Sir? Hello? <gasps> oh my god! He's dead. Oh. Poor old man. He didn't deserve to go like... Scott? <gasps> oh my god. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. The killer has already called the police. I think he wants us to be as scapegoats. We gotta get the hell out of here. What do you mean? We have nothing to do with his death. We were just here when it happened. Look, we're running out of time to find Sean Mars. The last thing we need is 24 hours in a police station explaining this whole thing. Well... So what do we do? Watch the front door. I'll get rid of our fingerprints from everything we touched since we came in. We better work fast. The police are going to be here any minute. What are you doing, Lord? If someone comes in, we're going to be in trouble. These are men that's a kill books. He must have been looking for owners of oils when he was killed. Forget it. We gotta get out of here fast. Quick. Gotta find everything Lauren and I touched since we came in here. Prince too. Don't want her to be mixed up in this.
Where did we leave Prince? Gotta remember. Fast. Scott, can you give me much longer? The police will be here any second. I'm almost finished. Be here any second. That's it. We're done. You get all the prints? I got what I got. It should be enough to prevent them from fighting us. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? I'm taking you home. This is getting way too dangerous. No way. Your partners, remember? We had a deal. The deal's off. I changed the rules. Whether you like it or not, you're going home. And I don't want to talk about it. That's it. I'm not a child. I know what I have to do. I want to find my sense of love. You're not going to stop me. You're gonna be a good girl, you're gonna go home, and let me get on with my investigation. Stop the car. Stop the fucking car! It's all my fault. I should never have let her come with me. I can't just leave her like that. She'd do anything to find the guy who killed her son. Lauren! Crap, I have no choice. I guess I... to hold him once again in my arms. What do you want? Oh, fuck it. I said a thousand times that I don't want any junkies in my door. If you want to score, man, you gotta fucking... Hey! Take it easy, man. Huh? Keep cool. <laughs> what do you want? Go? Money? Tell me what you need. Sure, we can make a deal, huh? God, I'm gonna blow your brains out, you son of a bitch! You think you can come into my house and steal my dog? You just shoot up in hell, motherfucker! Will you stop fucking moving?
man I give you whatever you want got dope I got cash you, you want some dope please please don't kill me man. I got children these my girls see this one Sarah and a little one that's Cindy please man I want to see them again Please, please don't shoot. <laughs> I'm a father too, but I have no choice. Dad, it's Sam. I got your information. And the owner of the apartment in Marble Street is a Dr. Adrian Baker. He's a struck-off surgeon. They used to sell drugs to junkies on the quad. He made some cash and bought up some cheap-ass apartments, including the one in Marble Street. Of course, he got caught. He did a few months in prison and was struck off the medical register. Interesting. Thanks for the information, Sam. I owe you one. Hey, Matt, be careful, okay? I'm on it. Talk to you later. The owner of the apartment where Ethan cut off his finger lives here. It's not much of a lead, but it's all I've got. I'm gonna act all doped up. I hope he goes for the bait. Hi. Uh, I was told that you could get Betropin. Without a prescription. Sorry, you were misinformed. Goodbye. Hold on. I, I, I really need your help here. I can pay. Well, why didn't you say so? Please, come in.
So, you're looking for Betropin, my dear? Are you having trouble sleeping? How much do you need? I don't know, um, about three, four boxes. Well, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Would you like a drink? I was just about to have one. Sure, why not? I haven't seen you around here before. Who told you about me? I met a guy at a party. He popped some betropin. Told me he got it from you. I heard you had some apartments for rent. I'm looking. Sorry, darling. Those are all booked up. Shame. I was looking for something around Marble Street. You're not drinking? I am. Um, I'm, I'm not really thirsty. I'll get your prescription. It won't be a moment. Wait here. The guy gives me the creeps. I better take a look around to see if I can find anything before he gets back. Quick. I gotta find something. Don't make a sound. He's near. He seemed to be upset that I wouldn't drink. I get the feeling I did the right thing. Maybe a quick look behind those doors. I'll make up some lies if he finds me. What's he up to? He went down the hall to get the drugs. Could the doc be the origami killer? There's something about the way he looks. Nosy little ferret. We're gonna have some fun together, my darling. I promise. Say hello to Matthew. He claimed he had come to the census. Another one of those goddamn government spies. So, you're interested in my Marble Street apartment. I rent it to my friend Paco, if you must know. I have no idea what he does there. Maybe that's where he fornicates with his dancers from the Blue Lagoon. To be honest, I don't give a damn. Just as long as he pays his rent, he can do whatever he likes. But enough with the chit-chat. I miss surgery, you see, so I take every opportunity to practice. I don't have any instruments here, so I use whatever comes to hand. I hope you won't hold that against me. Hold on. This might sting him. <laughs> Have you ever noticed? As soon as you start to do a little housework, someone always comes calling. I'll get rid of our visitor and be right back. Don't move. 
I won't be long.
tuba trips came. Got it in my pocket. 24 hours. I've got less than 24 hours if I want to find Sean Mars still alive. Blake wasn't in the office when I left. I don't think I'm gonna miss him. Can you stop that thing? Tom and Jaden, FBI. Can we talk for a minute? I'm listening. Can we go inside? Goddamn rain. Soaking wet. A scrapyard. Good a place as any to tinker with stolen cars. Mad Jack, a.k.a. Jackson Neville. This guy's got a criminal record as long as my arm. I'm looking for the owner of a blue Chevrolet Malibu 83. I don't give a damn how the car got here, whether you stole it or not. I just want to know who bought it from me. Sorry, ma'am. Don't ring the bell. I got a real bad memory for me. Perhaps I can help you to remember. If we find out that you sold the car to the man we're looking for, you're looking at some pretty solid time inside, Jackie boy. You trying to scare me with your big talk? I never saw your damn car. Now take a walk. I don't trust this guy. Same brand of tire as the car I'm looking for. Has the killer's car been here? Blood. Now why is there blood here? Few traces of blue paint, same tire tracks, no doubt about it. Killer's car was here. on your head, pig. I ain't got time to be playing around with you. Let's just get you out of sight and finish you off. Ah! 
Enough fucking around. Now you're gonna tell me about the man with the blue car. Go fuck yourself in the ass. I've no time to lose, Jack. I wanna know who that car belongs to. Well, what you want don't mean shit to me. I ain't no snitch. You better just lock me up now, boy. Do you like fireworks, Jack? Cause I bet them gas tanks are gonna blow up real nice. Shit, man, don't mess with the gasoline. Well, just say it was an accident. Or rather, I'll say it was an accident cause you won't really be able to talk, will ya, Jack? You crazy motherfucker, you out of your mind, man! No, I don't know nothing about the guy. He wanted me to get rid of his dirty car, get him a new one with false plates. He paid cash, and I ain't the questioning kind. He said I was supposed to drop the word to a guy named Paco down at the Blue Lagoon when the car was done. Now that's all I know. We'll continue this discussion down at the station. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything... Shit, not now. Anything you say can and will be... Hey, <laughs> you look like you got a problem, man. So, you think the origami killer killed Manfred? That makes sense. Didn't want him spilling his guts to us. And you suspect Gordy Kramer, right? Oh, him or one of his men. Gordy has the time and the means, not to mention the fucked up attitude to go along with it. He's only a suspect, but he's a pretty guilty looking one. Are these your files on the case? Yeah, I've been working on them for a couple of years. Uh, I built up a mountain of paperwork. Magazines about origami? You think the killer could have subscribed to one of those? If he was even remotely interested in origami in the last 30 years, his name may be in there somewhere. The trouble is, there's over 500 names. It gets a squat. I'm starving. Do you have anything to eat? Well, I'm no chef, but I should be able to make some scrambled eggs if you like. Great. I'm soaking wet. I need to warm up a little. Is it okay if I take a shower? I'll be my guest. Go to my bedroom. It's the next door. Oh, I'll cook up the eggs while you're under the shower.
Egg should be ready by now. I took the liberty of borrowing your bathrobe. It looks better on you. Hey, that almost looks good enough to eat. What's that? The notebook I took from Manfred's place. According to this, about 30 clients bought spare parts for Royal Machines in the last 10 years. The killer may be one of them. Oh, you know, checking out the alibi of 30 clients, one by one, that's a lot of legwork. Except that if we cross-check them with the list. The list of subscribers to Origami Magazines, you still got that, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Lauren, wait! killer really used a royal typewriter and if he subscribed to an origami magazine his name should be on both lists well Lauren uh, I mean that's just an assumption but yeah I suppose his name is here somewhere help me we're gonna find him The guy whose name was on both lists died when he was 10. What are you gonna do now? Pick up his coffin, make sure he's dead? I know it doesn't make any sense. Unless the killer was only using his name. But why use the name of a kid who died 30 years ago? Well, that's what we came to find out. The name is John Shepard. It should be on a grave around here somewhere. You never give up, do you? The sooner we find that grave, the sooner we can get the hell out of here. Time to look for John Shepard's grave. <laughs> this girl knows her mind all right. No point in trying to reason with her. It's cold. It's raining. I'm standing outside getting soaked. Oh, how I love my job. I should be investigating Gordy Kramer right about now. And here I am, standing in a... Excuse me. I'm looking for the grave of a boy named John Shepard. Straight ahead. A little further on. Thanks. Origami figures. That's one hell of a coincidence. These flowers are fresh. Looks like someone's still tending the grave. Oh, youngin. That one I knew well. You knew John Shepard? I've worked this graveyard nearly all my life. I remember what happened. It was in 77, October, I think. Get good for nothing, hoodlums! Get the hell out of here! God, oh, beat it! You lousy, no good brats! Come back when your fucking mother comes! 
<sighs> He's drunk again. What are we gonna do? It's pouring rain. We're gonna get soaked if we spend a day outside. Well, this won't get beat. Little rain never hurt nobody. Come on, let's go play. Bet you can't catch me! The construction site is empty. Makes for a great playground. but a slow poke.
play hide and seek. You go and count to 20 and try to find me, okay? One, two, three, four, five, nine, thirteen, seventeen, twenty. Christ, that's John's voice. Help. John! My foot. My foot is stuck. Grab on! I'll put it over there! Kid never did find any help. And his brother drowned in a pipe full of rainwater. The boy that lived, what happened to him? Well, all I know is he got separated from his parents. I, I think he got adopted. Well, looks like a storm's coming. I guess I better be getting home. What a horrible story. John Shepard drowned in the rain while holding his brother's hand. Do you think he... He could be the origami killer? Come on. Let's get back in the car. The kid died 30 years ago. Who's still tending the grave after all these years? <laughs> there she goes again. Surprising me. Wait. What's the matter? That man over there. Yeah? It's Charles Kramer. Gordy's father? What's he doing here? He's putting flowers. John Shepard's grave. Everything's gonna be all right. I find the guy, I ask a few questions, and then I get the hell out. Paco Mendez, the guy the doc lent his apartment to.
It's your lucky day, sweetheart. The boss wants to invite you to his table. Shit. You're making the biggest mistake of your life, Madison. I go in, I make him talk to the gun, and I get out of there before I get into big trouble. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything is going to be alright. Everything's... So, welcome to my little kingdom.
baby sweet cakes. <sighs> That's what I call kicking butt. You go, girl. If you call out, I'll kill you. Got it? Shit. What you want? You rent an apartment on Marble Street. I want to know why. An apartment? I don't know what you're talking about. Ugh! You fucking bitch! I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> you haven't got the balls, lady. But you're going to know, Bars, when I gush up with you. Boss? Is everything all right? If you value those prized balls of yours, Paco, then it's time for you to talk. Oh, ah, what you doing? Stop it! Stop it! I'm only getting started. How about some more? Ah, I never set foot in that apartment. I gave the keys to some guy. He said he needed a place. He had money. What was that guy's name? I, I don't know his name, I swear! Ah, ah! Ah! Shepard! His name is John Shepard! That's all I know, I swear it! Ugh. There, that wasn't so hard, was it? I really appreciated this romantic moment, but I got a dash. See you next time, lover boy. I don't hear you come in. A crazy beast came around here asking questions about the apartment on Marble Street. I don't know.
everything you ask. I think my debt to you is paid. He... he could have killed me. Why didn't he? The suspect dead. Someone tries to kill me. On the right track, do you think? Orchid pheromones. The fucking origami killer. Madison Page? What was a journalist doing here? Paco Mendez was no saint. His rap sheet reads like the telephone book.
bullet right between the eyes. Instant death. The killer was looking for something. I'll end up a basket case if things keep going like this. That bastard nearly broke my neck. Oh, got the shakes and the cold sweats. Better get back to the hotel fast. Hackle knew the killer. That's why he was killed. Ethan, are you all right? I... I killed a man. <laughs> I had no choice. I had no choice. You're not the origami killer, Ethan. You're not responsible for those murders. I can prove it. That changes nothing. Saving Sean is all that matters now.
I've already wasted too much time. I've got to get through this last trial. Things might have worked out between us if circumstances had been different. She's the only person I can trust. But now I have to be alone to do what I have to do. Only one more origami figure. Then I find my son. She's still asleep. No goodbyes, no explanations. I'll just leave before she wakes up. I should have guessed. All this time and I had no idea. Ethan, what's the matter? I thought I meant something to you. Listen, I... You're a pretty good nurse for a fucking journalist! <gasps> Ethan, I, I, I wanted to tell you, but... What kind of article were you gonna write? My life with a serial killer? No, no, no. How I caught the origami killer. Maybe you'll get a book deal. I hope it went fucking worth it! Ethan, it's not what you think. I... You lied to me, Madison! All this time you fucking lied to me! I thought you wanted to help me, but you're only thinking of writing a fucking book?! It's true. I'm a journalist. I knew that you were the father of the boy who had disappeared, and... And I wanted to cover the story. But then I saw what you were going through to save your son. And... And I understood how much you love him. I wanted to tell you the truth, but I couldn't. I was afraid that you... That you... May not believe me. I was afraid that you'd ask me to go. All I want is for you to find your son alive. And when it's all over, I want to be with you. I'm sorry, Ethan. I'm so sorry.
You're leaving. Aren't you? It's the last origami figure. The last letters, then I'll know where Sean is. Take care, Ethan. I can't lose you now. I'm gonna go find something to eat. Wait for me, I'll, I'll be back in 10 minutes. I'm starting to fall in love. We'll find his son and prove he's innocent. I'll be able to help him now that he knows who I am. I was so afraid he wouldn't believe me. Wrong move, idiot. I should have admitted everything earlier. Now we gotta find his son. I think I know where to start looking. Cops. They're looking for Ethan. It looks like a raid. Too late. Ethan's gonna get arrested and he won't be able to save his son. I'm sorry, Ethan. I'm so sorry. Come on, what was the damn number? Come on, come on. Pick up the phone. Hello? The cops. They're in the motel. You've got to get out of here.
Lord. I'm sorry, Scott. You should have listened to me, Mr. Shelby. I told you to drop the investigation. Your son is a serial killer. How many people does he have to kill before you turn him in? Gordy has his faults, but he's still my son. You have no children, Mr. Shelby. You can't possibly understand. You leave me no choice. Your investigation is over. For good. Switch on that ignition. I was going to take up swimming again. This isn't exactly what I had in mind. You got a car back at your place? Mine's obviously pretty fucked up. Yeah, sure. What are you going to do? I'm going to go settle a few scores. Come on, I'll take you home. Lock your doors and windows and don't let anybody in but me. Okay? Be careful, Scott. I don't want to lose you.
Stay back! Don't come near me, or I'll shoot! <clears throat> Fucking asshole. Please, don't hurt me! killed all those kids, didn't he? He's the origami killer. No! No! He's innocent! He's not a killer! Not a killer! <laughs> oh. 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 You're a fucking liar. Now tell me the truth. No! No, please! Don't hurt me! Last chance. I don't know. I swear! I don't know anything! Stop! Stop! I beg you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. Gordy. Gordy always wanted his fun, you know. He, he wanted to... to be like the origami killer. He kidnapped that kid and... He held him under the water for a little too long. It was an accident. An unfortunate accident. He just wanted to play. He told me everything. He was crying. He was so sorry for what had happened. Whatever he did. Gordy... Gordy is my son. No one will miss him. What? That boy, Gordy killed. No one will miss him. A street trash, like so many others. Oh, you disgusting pile of shit. And what about John Shepard? Why did you put flowers on his I, grave? I own the construction site where he died. I never forgot. I've been putting flowers on his grave for 30 years. John had a twin brother. What happened to him? I don't know. He was adopted, I think. His mother... His mother should know. Her name is Anne. Anne Shepard. My heart! My heart! Quickly! I need my pills. In that drawer. There. Yeah. <sighs> Fucking bastard. Let him die. Only a few hours left before Sean Mars dies. Hope I'm not wasting my time. Hello, I'm looking for Anne Shepard's room. Please sign the visitor's book. Are you a member of the family? <coughs> yeah, you could say that. Oh, she'll be pleased to have a visitor. No one ever comes to see her. With the Alzheimer's, she has trouble remembering things, but it'll still please her, you know. It's room 19 at the end of the corridor. Thank you. <coughs> John Shepard died 30 years ago. Hope his mother has all the answers to this puzzle. Room 19. 
Where is that? Room 19. Where is that? Hello, Mrs. Shepherd. Is it time for my pills already? No, Mrs. Shepherd, I... They're never on time with my pills. I don't know what they do here. In the other hospital, they were always on time. But here... My name is Madison Page. I'm a journalist. I'd like to ask you some questions about your son. I don't like this hospital. The food isn't very good, you know. Your other son, Mrs. Shepherd, John's twin brother. What was his name? What other son? I have no other son. I never had any children. Try to remember, Mrs. Shepherd. John's twin brother was placed with a foster family after the accident. What was the name of the foster family? I asked them for a television, you know. They said I didn't have enough money. It's a pity. I'm fond of television. I know what happened at Carnaby Square. Do you remember? Carnaby Square. I think I used to live there a long time ago. We didn't have much money at the time, you know. We had to make do with very little. You had a son named John, and John had a twin brother. Do you have my pills? It's time for my pills. I think your son is in trouble, Mrs. Shepherd. He's done some terrible things. I need to find him. Do you understand? Terrible things you're telling me. He never came to see me, can you believe it? In 10 years, never. No one forgets their mother, do they? Do you remember John? My Johnny. He is a good little boy, you know. Mrs. Shepard, your son may be linked to a series of murders. Perhaps you have some information that could help the investigation. Are you a new nurse? Where are my pills? This woman might be the origami killer's mother. Must be some way to get her to remember. It'd take days, if not longer, to find the name of the family that adopted her son. Sean Mars would be dead by then. I love origami, but that's not my favorite one.
Oh, you know how to do these little dogs, too. My children loved origami. I taught them how to do it. John loved the little dogs. He always wanted to call them Max. Max, Max, Max. All dogs with the same name. I was wasting my time telling him they couldn't all have the same name. But he always wanted his paper dogs Max. It's funny, isn't it? All right, no point in wasting my time. I won't learn anything more by staying here. It seems to be working. She's remembering stuff. I've gotta find something else to show her. All right, no point in wasting my time. I won't learn anything more by staying here. Does Mrs. Shepard ever talk about her past? It's not all very clear to her now. Sometimes she'll remember the oddest things, though. I suppose if she sees something that reminds her of her past. I'm looking for her other son. He was adopted. I mean, he, he's probably changed his name. Is there any official documentation on Mrs. Shepard? No, there's nothing really. Nothing about her family. I guess if her son was adopted, then she's the only one who could tell you about that. Does she get many visitors? She's been here for ten years, and you're the first. Sometimes, if you show her things, it seems to trigger a memory from her past. You might get it to remember. Thanks for the advice. Show her things that take her back. What a lovely orchid. My sons loved orchids. We used to grow them in the back. When John died, I laid orchids on his grave. Are these your children, Mrs. Shepard? John and his brother? Is that them? They're good little boys. Their father never looked after them, always drinking. They didn't have an easy life, you know. I cried when they told me. I'd already lost one of my children, and now they were taking away another one, you understand. The foster family, Mrs. Shepard. What was the name of the foster family that adopted John's brother? They were really very nice people. I met them, you know. In the beginning, I used to go and see my little boy. And then I got sick and I couldn't go any longer. Perhaps he thought I'd forgotten him. He must have thought I didn't love him anymore. His name, Mrs. Shepard. What was his name? But I loved him. If you only knew how much I missed him. Please, Anne. His name. What was his name? Come closer.
The last trial. The last question. Are you prepared to give your life to save your son? There is a deadly poison in this file. It will kill you in exactly 60 minutes. If you drink it, you will get the last letters of the address. You will have enough time to save your son and say goodbye to him, but then you will die. You can drink the file or decide to leave. The choice is yours. I did what I had to, Sean. Your dad's coming to save you. Several different addresses fit these letters. God, they're scattered all over the city. I don't have time to check them all. I may only have time for one address. If Sean's not there, I'm done. It's a crapshoot.
We've only got a few more hours left to save Sean Mars. There has to be a goddamn clue somewhere. It's probably staring me in the face. This kid's gonna die, and I'm going around in circles! All packed up and ready to go? What are you talking about? The investigation's over. We know who did it. We no longer need your services anymore, Norman. So you can ride your files all the way back to Washington. I'd be lying if I said I was gonna miss you. The investigation isn't over. You have absolutely nothing on Mars. Mars is guilty. Case closed. Anyway, it's no concern of yours. Now you're off the case. So pack up and fuck off. Blake, you are an unbalanced, psychopathic asshole. I'll take that as a compliment. Honestly, I don't give a shit what you think. I found the origami killer. Everyone's happy. End of story. Have a nice trip back, Norman. Killer's name is here. Somewhere in this data. I just have to find it. Find it before it's too late. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you know what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. It'll end up killing you if you're not careful. That would be most unfortunate, sir. Someone, the water's still rising. Joe won't be able to hang on for long. Dad, I've got to get Dad. He's the only one who can save John. Gotta move. This place is completely deserted. There's no one around to help. Need to get help fast. John's gonna drown. John's gonna drown. Let's greedy mouth to see, won't it? 
go away. Please, Dad, I'm begging you. John's gonna die. John's gonna die. What did I Dad. tell you? Crap. Please, please, Dad. You've got to save John. I tried, John. I really tried. But he wouldn't come. Please don't die, John.
lost your touch, girl. The Origami Killer's apartment. There must be something that'll tell me where Sean Mars is. I'll go through it, room by room, but there's bound to be some kind of clue. A cop's uniform. Always dressed a cop. That's why children went with him. He was dressed as a cop. Shelby could come back at any mo- Sean Mars. Oh, the lunatic's been watching him drown. But it's some kind of a well filling up with rain, slowly drowning him. Oh, there's not much time left. There, there, there must be something here showing where the well is. Shit, it needs a password. Got it. Max. The name John gave to his paper dogs when he was a child. What the hell is that? An address. It's gotta be where Sean Mars is. Hurry. There's no time to lose. So you found my little secret? It's over, Scott. All those children killed just to find a father capable of saving his son? Shut up! You don't understand. There's one child left. There might still be time to save him. Let him go. Do what your father couldn't do. Panic. Just stay calm and think. consciousness in a few minutes unless I do Think, man, think. I gotta find some way to.
way too high. I'll kill myself if I jump. I gotta find something else. I know where Sean is. I've got to tell Ethan. Ethan, it's Madison. I know where Sean is. He's at 852 Theodore Roosevelt Road. He's still alive. You can still save him. I'm on my way. Be careful, Ethan. The killer's still out there. No one's gonna stop me from saving my son.
God, Sean, answer me! Don't die on me, son, please. Breathe. You gotta breathe. I thought you were gone. Oh, oh. Dad, I, I knew you'd come and oh. save me. Oh. 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 Sean, listen. You are the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I want you to know that whatever happens, I love you more than anything in the world. I took poison an hour ago, and I'm not dead. Ethan! Thanks, Madison. If you hadn't told me the address, Sean would be dead by now. I know who the killer is, Ethan. I can prove your innocence. Congratulations, Ethan. You succeeded. You're the father that I have been looking for all these years. The man capable of giving his own life to save his son. You got what you wanted. I finished your trials. Now let us go. I'm afraid that's not possible. Your lady friend knows my little secret. I don't intend to end my days in prison. I'm going to have to kill you both. I'm sorry. You earn my respect. <sighs>
Was general relief this morning when the police announced that they had found have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. Scott Shelby, 48, is a former police lieutenant who claimed to be a private eye hired by the families of the killer's victims. Shelby was killed during a massive police operation, but further details have not yet been released to the public. Let's just say a friend of a friend let me jump in line. If we like it, it's ours. Hey, Dad! I think I found my room! Well, what do you think? It's perfect, Ethan. We'll be able to forget what happened. We'll lead a normal life. And one day, it'll all just seem like a bad dream. We've earned the right to be happy now, Ethan. All three of us. sure you've thought this through, Norman? You've got a promising career ahead of you. It's a pity that... With all due respect, sir, I'm done thinking. 
I need to lead something like a normal life. I've just got a bit too close to everything recently. I need to step back. At least for a while. Will you be coming back to the FBI? I don't know. I'm making no promises. You can keep your Ari if you like. This one's going offline. There's a new model due next month. I... I think you better take it back. It's just a little too compelling and... Uh, well, it won't help me where I'm going. The real world. Whatever you want. I hope you find what you're looking for, Norman. I hope so, too. My son, Scott. Were you thinking about that when you held me in your arms? I don't know why you did all this. Nothing can justify it anyway. I feel nothing but contempt for you. Nothing but contempt. Stay back! Don't come near me! Or I'll shoot! 